guys, welcome to Sunday. It's starting out rough. Good girl, Penny Pickle. Good morning and welcome to today's video. It's starting out rough because anytime I have some place to be and a lot to do before I can get there, it's, it's rough. <laughs> There you go. But welcome to today. We're headed out. The other horses are on their way in. It is just starting to rain. <laughs> starting to rain. What? Okay. Uh, Gracie is on hiatus. She's the only one holding it hope. She's like, I'm not going in. They can't make me. Lovey's going to make her. <laughs> Willow came all the way to her. Gabby's still trying. I saw Gracie just look up. Yeah, come here and ask me. I saw Gracie look up and then put her head back down. Yeah, see, there it goes again. Okay, you ready for my question? Yeah. Thank you. She just does that. She's such a loving okay. horse. So if you step on four leaf clover, will it give you bad luck? No, it gives you good luck. But if you step on it and crush it. Crush it, sister! <laughs> Maybe I've been stepping on four leaf clovers and that's why I keep having bad luck. What's your bad luck? Well, all last month I cut my fingers. That's true, she kept cutting her fingers. Your <laughs> Willow will always kiss. Her tail just is swishing. <laughs> People always look at tails to see if they're moving to show something bad, but it also shows for some horses excitement. It shows anything really. It's just like an expression of emotion. And, and sometimes I feel like people think it's always bad, but it's not always bad. I don't know how I tell anything. Well, you're really good at teaching horses, Sophie. Yeah, but the thing is I don't. You're instinctual. You're teaching her by instinct. So anyway, we did the test to see if the jump is still standing. It is. I'm gonna hopefully paint this sucker today. Yeah. <laughs> but do you know that they say it's important to leave stuff in your horse's environment, in their paddock, in their field, in their arena, whatever, so that they can play and be active when you're away. Yeah, Penny pushes it. And, and I like to bring new things and add them to their environment all the time. And I'm gonna make that like a priority, but that's what we've been doing. And it's good for them. It's good for Penny to go around pushing stuff. It's good for her to <laughs> be kissing all the time. Anyway, we're headed out. We're headed out, Pen. Have a rest. Sleep off that bloat. Actually going out to meet someone for coffee. And you guys know that I very rarely leave my family. Yeah, she barely, rarely, barely, rarely. Barely, like, rarely, but it's good for- Sometimes when I say things, it turns out blah, 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 blah. Yeah, me too. Cute <laughs> sister. Uh, I'm literally talking, Ellen, talking to Elizabeth, and then all she hears is Sometimes I'm like actually talking clear, and all people hear is because they don't make sense. So I'm meeting a friend for coffee, and I'm letting my family go to the barn and handle all the horse stuff on their own. Typically I'm the one that does the horse stuff, but it's good for me to have a break. And it's good for them to have a break for me. Like, I thought you were driving yourself and you were taking the charger. So that is the plan, and then we are going to come home and do something like man you guys like when something in life is meant to be it happens naturally it happens easily when you have to struggle and fight every single step of the way it's time to stop reassess and see if it's the right thing and i've done that before i've like been no no this is gonna work this is gonna work and then it's worked out in the end and i've just had to struggle and fight for it but when things are truly meant to be, there's no struggle and no fight. And this whole thing with Sophie and I and the ponies has been such a easy, like fast forward thing. Also, uh, before I hand the camera over to Sam, because he's gonna be taking you guys with him to the barn to check Chino, that the farrier is coming in the morning to take care of his feet, figure out what's happening with him so that we can get it back on track because Gabby has another show in two weeks and it's been a few days now and we need to get him moving and grooving and back on track. So wait, 
uh, there's something I forgot that I wanted to tell you guys. I was thinking about this last night and I was thinking how important this is. I was thinking about how we all go through things that are like so awful and so hard and, and they become all consuming and then that's all we think about and we all, uh, it's all we stress about. Just like me with Chino's foot, like it just worries me. And, or like when we're helping a horse to gain weight and we're in that time where they're gaining weight and they're not quite there yet or in a time when I'm helping a horse lose weight and we're just in that process of it. So the thing that I'm working on in my life and I think it would be so important for all of us to know and understand this is that learning to enjoy the journey and love the journey helps with all those kind of situations. When you learn to enjoy the journey, you be stop becoming fixated on each individual stop or each little stressor that happens in your journey. When you enjoy the journey, you learn to ask questions like, wow, what will become next? Or, wow, how is God going to see me through this? Or, what will be our next, what will be the next step in our journey? But focusing on the problem sometimes it just makes it feel stressful but focusing on the fact that you are going to come through the problem and get to another side and sometimes focusing on that other side can really help you feel less stressed and and worry less and it works for me often and sometimes i have to continue to remind myself to do that to look forward and to enjoy the journey enjoy the process and so i thought maybe it would help with some of you guys we are at the barn and we're treating Chino's foot. Hey Chino, doing good? Doing better? No, I'm not doing better. But you're eating. You're at the round bale eating all your food. Hoof picking. Hoof picking. He's oh. going to the right here. Is he? It might have popped right there. It looks, um,. Looks like stuff's coming out of there, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, we're gonna soak his foot. You know, do the normal stuff with Epsom salt, soak it, rewrap, bandage it up. You loving your spa life? You missed the whole horse show. You missed the whole horse show this weekend. Yeah, we think it's popped and you know, he's on the mend now. Be ready for the show in two weeks, you know. There's a show in two weeks? Yeah. You ready for the show in two weeks? Teamwork, teamwork. I so we're making the duct tape boot. Duct tape? Oh, no, it's got crooked. Alright, so this is how we make duct tape boot. We crisscross. Crisscross. We go one way that way, and then we go along this way. It would help if we had a cutting board. Then we go along that way, then we go along this way again. Oh. I've, so, I've seen online they make duct tape boots for sale and they make different sizes. Now this one you get to customize your size. But, yeah. It's a different size every time. You're the cutting there. You're the cutting. You're cutting it. If you're cutting it, you're cutting too short. Well, blame Sophia for rolling it out. Until we get a nice square kind of looking thing. So Gabby the perfectionist there cut the ends off so that was a perfect square. It's not perfect. It's not perfect, but it's perfect enough. That's a perfect square. No, because they get in the way because your fingers get caught on them. Oh, they sticky. get in the way. That's why you cut it off. Uh-huh. And then now she's going to cut it so you can easily wrap it around the hoof. You just cut the four corners. Mm -hmm. Got a hot yeah, foot there, Chino. Know, hot it. foot. It's good. We're getting better at this, aren't we? <laughs> no, I'm getting worse no, at I it. No, I think we're getting better. Oh, look at that. That's not bad. That's not a bad duct tape boot. That'll last till tomorrow morning when we're back. Comment down below. Who thinks this duct tape boot will last till tomorrow morning? I it say yes. It will remain on his hook till tomorrow morning. Yeah, it'll be there still tomorrow. Anyways, we're headed back to get Laura and get Starbucks and yeah. Aw, Sophia, I swear to God, Sophia is like, an animal whisperer. When I go near him, he runs off. When she sits down, he rolls over. It says, tickle my belly. It's such a good coffee date. It was so fun to just get out there and like talk, adult talk. <laughs> it doesn't happen. It was so nice to just like say stuff and not have 
somebody be like, no, that's not true. <laughs> a couple of years ago, we took a online trick training course and we also took a Liberty, natural Liberty course with our horses. And the Liberty course was so involved, we did the best we could with the course. And we can go back and watch it anytime and work harder oh, at it. She's already understanding. But anyways, we didn't really get a chance to work on the trick training because there was so much involved and it was at the end of end of winter and the beginning of spring and it was like show season and we were just really busy. So she's trying to figure out how to get inside of it. So now we're gonna go back and revisit the 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 trick training. And today we're gonna teach our horses how to fat. I took these towels and I made little balls and we're gonna get our horses to chase them, to, to retrieve them, to fetch them. And that's my horse. <laughs> so basically what you're gonna do, I cleaned up, we cleaned up the arena. So the horses are ready. They're like, oh, we're into this. So basically what we're gonna do is get our horse to bite the ball that I made. It's not how you do it. She has to pick it up or she has to bite it. So you want your horse to bite it. <laughs> I'm going to put the camera up in a minute. You have to bite it, Penny. <gasps> yes! Yes! Wait, you're supposed to give them a treat the minute they bite it. Good girl. Yeah. Mine's Come on, Penny. Penny's still stuck there like, where's that ball? <laughs> So you put it in your hand first until they bite it. Put it in your hand and then as soon as they bite it, you give them a treat. Here, I need more treats. Penny. Penny. <laughs> She's like, I know there was a ball here. Come on, Penny. No, you have to hold it in your hand until she bites it. As soon as she bites it. <laughs> she bit it. Okay. She didn't get right. Penny. You're making me lose. <laughs> Well, it's not a competition, but I mean, I still like to be the best. <laughs> that one thing, one time. Look, Penny, look. Bite it. It's harder for me because I can't be right there with a treat. All right, come on. Bite it. Hmm. She's offended by my ball. I, I did something. You did something? I put the treat in it, and then she bites it to try and get the treat. Look, Penny. <laughs> she doesn't like my ball. There we go. She grabbed onto it and held it. So essentially, they're meant to bite the ball. <laughs> she's offended. Maybe she smells like the laundry's of soap or something. Come on. Here. Look. Get it. You have to bite it, Penny. Bite it. She bit it and I You traded me balls and now you got the good one. Oh look, Gracie's got it. Give her a treat if she bites it. So Gabby says that her horse already picked up the, the ball. So essentially what you want to train them is to pick it up. Because once they learn to pick it up, you can throw that ball anywhere and then tell them to fetch and then they'll go pick it up. Fetch. And some horses will take a long time learning this and hey, some horses will do it qu more quickly. Like let me see if my horse will use yours for a second. Here, because I don't think that she likes this. Right, let me see if my horse likes, no, my horse doesn't Give like it to these. My pony. Give it to my pony. Bite it, bite it. She's bite it. it. Bite it. She did bite it. Yes, good girl. There's always one, there's always, <laughs> <laughs> They've traded partners. There's always one horse that excels in every thing, and it is Gracie right now. Oh, see, she's asking for the treat, so she understands now at least that there's something to do with this homemade ball. And uh oh, hey, Penny. Ooh, that's dangerous. Come on, come on. Bite it. Smell. Smell what's in there.
Wow, I watched the video and was like, this is so easy. Our horses will just do this, no problem. But it's a lot harder. So if we can get them to pick it up. I even put it like a carrot in there and she won't do it. So I might have to put her lead rope on and make her stand there. So when they did it in the video, they used lead ropes. So eventually if Gabby gets to the point where she can throw it a little ways away from the pony and tell the pony to fetch. One thing I know for sure about Penny is that it takes her like a minute for her to figure it out and it takes me walking away and her having time to process it for her to actually get it. I can't say for sure she'll get this one though because she doesn't understand at all. This is impossible. Fetch, fetch. You're gonna need a string and a carrot. Wait, let's give this a chance. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. When one thing doesn't work, you switch to another thing. So I'm gonna put a little bit of grain in here and see if that works. All right, I got a little ball of grain now. Oh, Penny. You're supposed to say fetch. So that when we make it into a trick, we can say fetch and eventually get them to come back to us. Look, I put something new in here for you. Look, smell it now. What do you think? I guess, uh, I don't like this. Bite it, you have to bite it. She's gonna do it. Good girl. Yeah, I'm gonna give her a treat even though she didn't do it because I want her to understand that I want her to do that. Oh, look at that, good girl. All right, so essentially the goal is to teach them to bite the, the thing. Yeah. So it just might take a few more times. So Willow is actually learning. She's learning to bite it. Oh, good girl, she picked it up. So that's what's meant to happen. And you're supposed to do this over like the course of a couple of, di couple of different days. And that's what we're gonna do. So that's the point. She's supposed to be able to pick it up and then you're supposed to push it, like throw it out a little bit and then make them pick it up and say fetch every time. And then eventually it gets to the point where you throw it and you say fetch and they go and pick it up and bring it back to you. So that's our goal. Yeah, my horse is in the corner pooping. The slow way is the fast way with horses. So if any of you guys go out there and try this and have success with your horses, then let me know in the comments because we're gonna keep trying. <laughs> Sophie's not leaving until it's done. Yeah! Falls like a sack of potatoes, but it's good. Yeah, it falls like a sack of potatoes, but it's good. Yay! Now try throwing it a little bit and see if she... Oh my gosh, she still has not picked it up all the way. Sam said that he told you guys that Chino's abscess is leaking now, it's starting to come out now. Of course, it's Sunday, Sunday afternoon. It's always the way though, like just before a show and then it ends just as the show was ending, like <sighs> Murphy's Law. Murphy's Law, you guys. Ah, good girl. All right, now Penny did it for Sophie. Like you, Sophie's our trainer. Okay, so she's actually interested in that one. That one's got apples. <gasps> she bit it. You should. So we're gonna keep trying with this. Like we're gonna do it tomorrow, and we're gonna do it the next day, and we're gonna keep working at it. Penny obviously likes the thing with apples in it the best and we are gonna keep working on it and we're gonna show you the final project but this is was today like this was training them today it's the beginning of fetch you guys don't you know that you're beautiful just the way you are